What's up, everybody? Ben Heisler from FantasySportsMarkets.com. With me, my good buddy, Derek Brown. He of FantasyData.com and the Quant Edge and a fantastic fantasy follow on the tweet machine at dbro underscore ffb. And Derek, Doug Baldwin's career unfortunately looks like it's coming to an end, and that means a lot of potential changes for the Seattle offense. Oh, man, it's sad. Don't you hate it when you see one of the players that that has just been – Grossly underrated his entire career and amazingly productive, just limp out of his career, possibly. I, I absolutely hate it when you see something like that. But yeah, it's it's definite, man. Uh, what was that failed uh, physical designation failed, that they released him under? Yeah, failed physical. It looks like him and Cam Chancellor are on their way out of Seattle. And so the question yeah. then becomes, like, when you look at the career of, of Doug Baldwin, this is an undrafted guy in the 2011 season out of Stanford, and he put up some really impressive stats, especially between 2015 and 2017. This guy in PPR leagues was, was a top 10, top 12, and I think a top 8 wide receiver. Yeah, he was amazingly productive. I mean, you just look at his career arc. The guy is going to end up in one of, what the Seattle Seahawks ring of honor. I don't know, bird nest of honor, or whatever <laughs> they have up there. I have no clue. They're like the 13th and, man. Yeah, the 13th man. I mean, but it's <laughs> it's basically the last uh, fumes of the Legion of Boom just slowly just inkling out of there. But it's uh, everybody needs to tip the cap because the guy was just ridiculously productive. And he drained every single bit of talent into his career and his production. I mean, the guy left nothing to chance on the field. He was awesome. He was also one of those guys, too, that when you started to look at a lot of the mismatches in the slot, over the last five, six, seven years, Doug Baldwin was one of those key guys where you looked at his ability in the slot and thought, this is the perfect guy for this situation in this role, in this offense, and he thrived there. Oh, absolutely. You're looking at a guy who averaged 110 targets over the last four seasons, and just metric-wise, if you break him down, was just uber productive. Nobody could cover this guy. He was a route tactician. I I love watching film of him every single year, and you just look at the clips and how he sets defenders up. It It was magnificent. 2015, I, I messed up some of those numbers. 2015, he was 10th in PPR uh, scoring points. 2016, he was number 8. And that 2015 season, I think he had 14 touchdowns as well. 2016, he was 8th in PPR scoring amongst wide receivers. 2017, uh, he was 13. So three consecutive years, 10, 8, and 13, and still had some very productive seasons uh, following in, in 2018 as well. So now what happens? You have Tyler Lockett, who finished, I believe, as wide receiver 15 or 16 in PPR and this is a guy mm-hmm. that had what 71 targets everybody else surrounding him at like 100 plus but Tyler Lockett absolutely maximized his touchdown opportunities and I, I think you and I both agree he's going to get a lot more targets but the the touchdown regression is likely going to come even without Doug Baldwin oh yeah I mean the touchdowns are fluky we see that year after year and we kept saying that previously with Doug Baldwin I mean the 14 touchdowns you alluded to when was that going to fall off and stuff but with Lockett the 30-some-odd targets that he is in line to get a bump in if he assumes that, which, I mean, I project him to assume that number one role because you look at him. Baldwin in the slot, he was in the slot over 65% of the time over the last two seasons. Lockett, 49%, 51%. That's going to get a jump. And a guy that just eviscerated zone coverage last year, I mean, Lockett had a perfect QBR, 158.3 versus zone last year. His efficiency was off the charts. And so we all talk about, okay, well, there's got to be regression for touchdowns and efficiency. He's going to sit here and compensate for that with the target bump. And I know that Seattle's still going to run the ball. They were, what, top two, top three in in runs last year. So I I don't think that's going away. I don't think so either. But But Lockett's going to go into the slot more. He's going to assume the number one role, and he's going to get the target bump. So those things are going to compensate because you're still going to see the downfield usage and the explosive plays. They're going to compensate for any kind of regression with touchdowns and efficiency that he's going to have. So I I think right around that that top 15 wide receiver mark, probably top 20, if you're looking on the safe end, that probably seems to make the most amount of sense for him. His floor is top 20. I I think that... I, I actually I think it's more accurate probably to say his floor is what we saw last year. I think it's top 15 probably. And if he does repeat with uh, in that 8 to 10 touchdown range, 
he's probably going to end up as a top as a wide receiver one. That's crazy to think about. And again, it, it makes sense it is. just because you know how much more the targets are going to go up. And again, this is somebody that finished just behind Odell Beckham a season ago, right in front of Tyler Boyd. Uh, so the production is there. And he's also somebody that when Russell Wilson has to break out and scramble, they've been on the same page with a lot of these deep routes as well. So he'll be able to pick up those, those big chunk plays as well. So after Lockett, and we're looking at a possible top 15 wide receiver, maybe even as high as a back end wide receiver one. I mean, are we looking at DK Metcalf just stepping right on in? You know, everybody loves the guy's measurables and uh, the breakaway speed is outstanding. But to me, he kind of feels like a work in progress still. I don't know if I'm ready to completely buy in on DK Metcalf just yet to step in and have some sort of incredible Doug Baldwin type of production. To me, I think that's reaching. Oh, it's reaching. It's reaching in a big way. And I, I'm just not as much of a DK guy as most people. I think that he's going to have, he's going to have splash weeks. He is definitely going to have that. And he'll get those but, red zone targets too. Those 50, 50 well, balls. It, yeah. Oh yeah. He'll get those, but you're not going to see this target volume. You're going to see a, a, an explosive guy. Like if you were to look at, uh, Paul Richardson previously, those uh, are even Tyler Lockett. Let's go with that. Previously, low targets, big plays. He's going to break off some long touchdowns. That's going to happen. But is he going to get the volume? Is he going to? And everybody just loves some DK Metcalf because the dude is a freak. I mean, he looks like he was made in some type of lab, like he's half <laughs> robot. So, but I just don't think this is the year that you see DK blow up. If it ever happens, I don't think that it's this year. I mean, we were talking okay. before we turned the cameras on. Carroll's not exactly a huge fan of throwing rookies into the fire early, um, as you pointed out, a la Rashad Penny. And so, no bueno. No, I mean, do we see? I think the more likely occurrence is: do you see David Moore get the, get a little bit of a bump because he's going to play outside? He yeah. only played in the slot less than five percent last year. I don't think his role changes. I think you see DK man the other outside spot. So you have Moore and DK on the outside, and you have Lockett rolling in the slot when they go three wide, and that's pretty much what you're going to see. And the target totem pole was probably Lockett by a large margin, and then Moore and DK, and DK is probably fighting with that. I mean, the fourth spot with uh, running backs slash tight ends, that trio of tight ends that they have in Seattle. So I, I just don't see it for DK this year. Uh, I'm not a dad officially yet, but am I allowed to make a dad pun? Do I have your permission? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, so R- Rashad wasn't even worth his own last name in, in draft auctions last year. <laughs> All right, I'll... <laughs> Do we have a drum? Is there a drum sounder? You have some kind of like drum sound effect even, for that e- one? No, even the drum sounder is like, dude, no, that's that's atrocious. You're no longer allowed. <laughs> your, your your dad pun privileges have already been revoked. All right, last thing. Does this impact how we feel about Russell Wilson moving into the 2019 season where you value him uh, in your drafts and your auctions? To me, it doesn't really change a whole heck of a lot because no. it's still Russell Wilson. He's still going to get you those scrambling numbers, especially when they're down, and they're going to be down quite a bit this year. He's still going to be throwing and running for his life to me this really doesn't drastically change anything as far as where i'm ranking russell wilson as far as drafting goes it doesn't change anything it doesn't move the needle for me at all with russell wilson i think you feel as good about him or as bad about him however you want to feel before and after this i could actually make a better case for you that this probably if we're going to sit here and take a stance one side or the other Mm -hmm. that this is probably a plus for russell wilson in the sense that Doug Baldwin, when, it, it's sad to say he was a shell of himself last year. Right. He's a guy that, with 40, uh, he only had four games of over 70 yards. He had the second lowest uh, yards per reception of his entire career. So he just, he wasn't healthy. He wasn't effective. So if you're going to thrust more targets in the direction of a more explosive, a healthier version of Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett, I mean, I can make you a better argument that that's a plus for Russell Wilson in featuring younger, healthier players that have just as much, if not more, explosive play upside in that offense. So So ultimately, while we might be a little bit bummed to see the career of Doug Baldwin possibly come to an end as to what it means necessarily for the Seattle wide receiving core and Russell Wilson— doesn't change a whole heck of a lot. In fact, if anything, it maybe bumps them up a little bit in your upcoming drafts. 
For Derek, I'm Ben. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being a part of this video. Make sure you guys are following Derek on Twitter at dbro underscore FFB and reading his outstanding work over at Fantasy Data and the Quant Edge. Where else can people find you? So I'm also putting out uh, Dynasty content for Gridiron Experts, and we have got uh, a very big project that I'm very gracious to be a part of this year in the Fantasy Black Book with Joe Pisapia, Matt Franchise, and a ton of other people. Jake Seeley's up in there, yeah, great uh, Nate guys. Hamilton. Yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. That drops June 1st, so you will see probably everybody from the team on that everywhere. And all, I mean, pretty much anywhere that people want to listen to football talk, we're going to be out there pumping it because it is a great resource for the fantasy season. It's an awesome, awesome resource. Highly recommend you guys check it out. As for me, you can follow me on Twitter, at Benny Heiss. And if you're looking for a new place to play daily fantasy sports, highly suggest you check out fantasysportsmarkets.com. It's all the fun of DFS without salary caps. You can truly draft the guys that you want to play. Uh, Derek played a handful of times last year. He did yeah. well and had a lot of fun. And we always have contests for Major League Baseball, for NBA, for PGA, and, of course, plenty of contests coming up for the NFL season. So for Derek, I'm Ben. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you soon.